Today, we are gonna be breeding the red neon blue eye or the Pseudomogul luminatus. This is a fish that's quickly become one of my favorites here in the fish room. And I was introduced to it only a few months ago by my friend Jason. I've recently taken a liking to natives, especially New Guinea fish and Australian fish. And these guys hail from New Guinea. So they're a small little blue eye. They're part of the Pseudomogul family. And they're probably the best looking blue eye I reckon that's available on the market. These are quite pricey and a lot of people have trouble breeding them. And I thought today I'd just run you through how I breed them. So we've had a bit of success here and it's really not too complicated. It's fairly labor intensive. But if you have a few tanks, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to do this at home. So in this group here, we have eight or nine adult pseudomoguls that we bred ourselves. So these are our F1 generation. I originally received like 10 from Jason. He just gave them to me, which is awesome. We bred those and we grew out the first lot of fry, which we only had 10 of. And you can see they're in this tank. I love to do this with my fish. I love getting the F1s because normally they're really, really hardy and they're used to your water and they lay the most eggs. So these guys have just reached sexual maturity. They've just started to lay. And you can see in this tank, we have two mops. So up here in the top right hand corner, we have a floating mop. And then down here, we have a sunken spawning mop. So with my breeding tanks, I like to have as few variables as possible where I could have my success interrupted. So that's why we have such a simple setup. We have a 20 gallon tank or 80 liters which I use for a lot of my breeding, a sponge filter just because it's foolproof, and we have two spawning mops. Then from there, all we've done is add in our adults and let them settle in, and we've just been feeding them well. So every day I've been feeding these guys bug buffet. It's a great food, it's my new food, and it's really high protein, so it really gets them conditioned. Obviously these guys are little insectivores, they sit up on the top of the surface of the water and you know pick at bugs and things, and it's just a really, perfect food for these guys especially. And then from there, what you'll notice happen is these are quite an elusive blue eye compared to the other ones. But you'll notice the males trying to get the females to go into the mops, at which point they'll get next to each other and then disperse eggs. These actually lay quite a few eggs. So what we're gonna do now is actually check for some eggs. So when we're checking for our eggs, so you can see the adults come out to the front now. You can see just how good some of those males look. The females also look amazing. The males have the really long, nice thread fins. The females don't, which is the way you sex them. When you're at the shop and you're picking them out, make sure you get one with really nice long thread fins and then get a nice female, still nice and red, a little bit more plump. These guys go well in pairs. You can get them in pairs or you can do them in trios. Honestly, more females is better. You don't want too many males. You want them to focus on breeding. So what we'll do is take out our mops every morning. And what we'll do is squeeze out all the water so we can actually look in the mop. And honestly, the process is just a lot of hand picking. What I'll do every day is just hand search these mops. They are notorious for eating their eggs. So you do want to take the eggs out the second you start seeing them and you want to start constantly checking. But these fish here, they're new breeders. They're not laying many eggs and they've only started to lay a few. I just found one egg. <laughs> you can see how small they are. They're just the little tiny eggs that they'll lay. I haven't noticed whether they lay them better in the tops or the bottom mops. The more mops you add in, the better, and I'll show you that in another tank. What I'll do is just get a container of water, and basically this is just part of my morning routine at this point. What you're gonna do is just grab the egg with your fingers, gently. They are very fragile. They'll just stick to your fingers like this. We're just gonna put them in a container of water. Another couple here. They just, honestly, it's annoying because they spread their eggs around. So like, it's not super easy to find them. They don't lay them in clusters like Corydoras and other fish do. You wanna get your fish, let them settle in for at least a month and then expect to start seeing some eggs. Like they might start laying the second day, but a lot of the time they really need to settle in. They're a very skittish fish. If you're not getting eggs after a month, you gotta change the food. The second you start feeding these guys more protein in the form of live brine shrimp or bug buffets are great food, that's when you'll start seeing them actually lay eggs. If you're not feeding them the proper foods, you're not gonna get the results you want. You might get a couple eggs here and there, but like I said, they're really good at eating them. 
which is why I don't just leave the mops in there and then take them out after a week. Like you have to check daily because otherwise you get much smaller yields and it's honestly worth it. I really enjoy the morning routine of coming through, having a look for eggs. It's always a nice little surprise. Chuck in my headphones and just pick out the eggs. I'll show you my other breeding tank. It's a lot dirtier and it's got a heap more mops and we get a ton more eggs. So we'll come around to this side. So these are our original breeders, maybe six fish, but I've got four mops. A ton more space for these guys to breed and they're also like hidden away in a corner so they don't really get a lot of foot traffic. They seem to be breeding a lot more for me, but they're also much more mature fish, but we'll have a look. Same deal as last time. We'll just grab out our mops. Yeah, so we already got one there. These fish lay a lot more eggs for me though. Three up here. Lots of little just hand picking. So I've just spent a few minutes picking out these eggs and there's way, way more than the other tank. We've collected 40 eggs and they'll do this every two days or once every day-ish. You can build your numbers up pretty quickly. Something to note, while you're picking the eggs out, if you see like an egg that's white or not like clear and translucent looking. It's likely it's infertile, so I wouldn't even bother picking it out. That's the first job. Now we've got our eggs. The second job is raising them out. A lot of breeders struggle at this stage, but this can be quite easy. So I already have a tank for these guys. Honestly, the process from here is really simple. What I'll do is just have a rearing tank. So you can go big or you can go small. This is another tank like the parents tank, another 80 litre tank. Simply all I do is just make sure there's no snails, no planaria, that there's just going to be the eggs in here. I don't even bother with methylene blue and antifungals and stuff like that. I simply just dump the eggs in here. Wait for them to hatch. It's honestly that easy. And the thing with the Luminatus eggs that's kind of interesting is they take a long time to hatch. So these can take up to two weeks before they hatch. When they first hatch, they're way too small to eat brine shrimp. So I love to use bug buffet and I'll show you a rearing tank with fresh babies in it. So in this tank here, we have the previous lot of Luminatus and all these fish have just started to hatch out. So we need to give them a really tiny food. So I love to use powdered foods. This food is a great, great option. So it's super high protein, great for their development as little fish. Basically it comes in a pellet form like that. But the cool thing about this pellet is you can crush it up into a fine dust and you can sprinkle that across the top of the tank. And the little fish can eat all those tiny little particles and grow from there. So they are super tiny. They're one of the smaller fry in the fish room and they do need a really tiny food. So we love to use this to start with. As long as you don't overfeed it, it won't dirty up your water. So I'll do this once in the morning and once at night. The good thing about Luminatus fry is they're not a fry that needs to be fed all the time. They prefer to be fed once or twice a day, but if you are like the kind of person that's gonna miss a day feeding, the fry can go easily 24 hours without food. I mean, I wouldn't push it past that, but like, you know, a lot of our cichlids and stuff like that need constant feeding. These really, they don't mind. They're, they're a very easy fish to take care of. So this is day one. Once they reach the next stage, they go to the, like, the day seven stage, they can start to eat the next level of food up. So in this tank up here, these fish are at level two. So they're starting to get a little bit bigger. They're starting to get a bit of a red color. And that's when we can start to feed them baby brine shrimp. So I also feed these guys bug buffet. I feed this to them the whole entire time until they sell. But we also feed them live baby brine shrimp. We hatch this out on a daily basis. I've talked about it in so many of my breeding videos. So if you're new to baby brine shrimp, look it up. You're gonna to need to learn how to do it if you're serious on breeding fish. But we'll also feed this twice a day. So a little squirt on the top of the water, just like that. What you'll notice is all their little bellies start going orange and that's how you know they're eating. From there, it's like a two or three month growth until they start reaching adult size. 
In here we have some that are pretty much at sellable size. So they're in here with some spotted blue eyes, so I don't mind raising them up with other fish. You can build up quite a little army of these guys. Yeah, they're such a cute little baby fish and they still get that neon look at this age. We'll give them some food, but that's basically it. I mean, they're really not tricky to raise. They're like raising up any rainbow fish except you collect the eggs. We do have some available down below if you're in Australia to buy. So if you're interested in getting some of them, they're down there. And also Bug Buffet will be ready very soon for purchase through the website. So we'll also be able to ship that internationally. So all our international viewers will be able to get that food and use it for breeding. And yeah, we absolutely swear by the stuff. It works so well. Sweet, thank you so much guys. And I'll see you in the next video.